Magic, brought to you by... John Hancock, Mutual Life Insurance Company, one of America's great life insurance institutions, dedicated to the freedom, independence, and well-being of every American family. RCA, world leader in electronics. RCA, Victor, first in sight and sound. The Whirlpool Corporation, makers of RCA Whirlpool home appliances. May 27, 1957, live from New York, Producer Showcase brings you another evening of outstanding entertainment. Tonight, Festival of Magic, from the four corners of the world, for this one performance, the greatest magicians of our time, from the Orient. Lee King C with the sabers that tantalize the laws of balance and the floating golden ball that breaks the law of gravity. From the Union of South Africa, Robert Harbin, who makes a girl's head move almost three feet from her body and makes a thrilling escape from a straitjacket while suspended in mid-air. From Ireland, June Merlin, the bewitching witch who makes small animals into larger ones, into fur pieces, into great coats. From England, Cardini, the world's greatest manipulator at whose will cards float and cigarettes appear out of nowhere. From the United States, Milburn Christopher, who will attempt the most dangerous feat in the world, catching in his teeth a bullet fired at his head from a distance of 23 feet. From India, the great Sorkar, who before your eyes will saw a hypnotized girl in half. From France, René Septam, who finds live goldfish in thin air and cats and ducks and pigeons in the strangest places. And directly from his home in New York City, your host for the evening, Ernie Kovacs. <laughs> this is a production of Showcase Productions Incorporated. Producer Showcase will return with the first act of Festival of Magic in just a moment. And now, Producer Showcase presents Act One of Festival of Magic. Good evening, I am Joe Andrew. <laughs> I'm that Prince of Goodfellows, your host. Tonight we're going to have one of the few things. I see Big Mouth is back. 
I thought he was through with TV. He's gonna do nothing but movies. Ah, uh, they're all alike, Marvin. Talk, just talk. He looks better. Yeah. I uh, used to be pretty good at this stuff myself. <laughs> Doing little things, making animals disappear and appear again. I've kept all my little furry friends, if I may use the expression, kind of put them out to pasture, living with their happy memories. Why well, recall? Listen to that jazz. Living with our happy memories. I was on the road with that bum for seven years, and all I got to eat was domestic roquefort three times a day. It must have been terrible, Frank. John, you have no idea. Sometimes it got so bad, I just wanted to end it all. John, I was almost ready to throw myself in front of a cat. Oh, steady, Frank, steady. Sorry, John. Some of the uh, gentlemen with whom I've been at odds occasionally, the NBC vice presidents, felt that perhaps I might not restrain myself in doing a magic show. Uh, they're a little bit skeptical. <laughs> They've been here all day. It's awfully difficult to work with them here. I would, however, like to open before our first uh, professional magician with a little performance of my own. I might call upon one of the... Would you, sir? Yes. Would you join me? I have here the uh, magic cabinet. Tonight, the Festival of Magic brings you magicians from seven parts of the world. All of them have performed in many, many countries. Never has this wonderful collection of magicians ever performed on one single program. Our first magician who is making his American debut is an exponent of the swift sorcery of the Orient. We think he will be especially perplexed by Li King Si's floating golden ball magic. Li King Si of the Orient.
soldiers have passed through nails to prove that they are not magnetized. nice of you gentlemen to stay with us for the entire show. It, it isn't often that we get this many vice presidents together in one lump, as the expression goes. And it's awfully good to have you with us. Most appreciated. Perhaps if time goes well, I, I might be able to get the opportunity and the time to do the, the wonderful picking the rabbit out of the hat trick that I do. It's quite exciting. I think you'll like it. Hey, Lester. How was Kovacs with you and that uh, rabbit out the habit? He worked that act with you, didn't he? 
I worked with him for 15 years. 15 long, rabbit-picking years. It was murder, Frank. Absolute murder. He uses hair oil, you know. I got so slippery from the stuff, I could hardly walk straight. You sure it was from the hair oil, Lester? Are you insinuating that I drank on the job, John? Though heaven knows I had reason. And I was pulled out of that hat so many times, I was practically snowblind from dandruff. Well, uh, did you quit? No. He fired me one night when my foot got caught in the sweat band. Tough. Who's writing this stuff for the rabbits? <laughs> South Africa, it seems, means magic in itself. A magician who works in ancient tradition is Harbin of South Africa, bringing with him the excitement of levitation and decapitation. His escape from a straitjacket is probably one of the greatest accomplishments of physical magic known today. Very happy. Zed Harbin of South Africa. darkest Africa, the home of the witch doctors. It's here that I learnt all my magic, and perhaps you'd like to see some of the things that, that I've learnt. Now here's something wonderful. A cabinet, a weird cabinet with a hole here and a hole at the side. It's an empty cabinet. Make no mistake about it. Empty everywhere, a hole through the floor, a hole through the top. And here we have a little witch doctor. There she is. That brave little lady is going to step inside. We don't want to lose her, so we're going to tie her in so she can't get away. And tie her in tight. And when we've tied her in, we're going to close her in. And then fix her in. Right, get right down there and get fixed right in. Now we wanted to see the front, and here it is. Now we don't want it to get away, so we've got this. Fits right in here. Now put your little wrists in there like that. That's the idea. Now we're going to fix you in for keeps. Tight, tight, tight. And there it is. Wiggle your hands. Good, that's fine. Now that's a cucumber chopper. A tropical cucumber chopper. Right. And this way. And well, you see, we can chop them. Right, and here we go. Push my hands right through, here they are. The head is right away from the body. She can only keep alive so long. Right. And there she is, two tied up, and all in one piece. All right. and now for something really wonderful, and for this I need another beautiful girl. And as it happens, we happen to have one here. You stand right here, I want to show you a wonderful trick. Now this chair is just a chair, that's all it is. And this has a soft top, just feel it. That has a purpose. I want you to rest your neck on there. And in a moment, that's all you will be resting your neck on. Just trust me. What's the trick? This, this will give you a little bit of help. Just for a moment. That's all. You stand here and I'll show you what happens. This fits right up there so, makes it soft. This goes right over the top here, makes it soft. The chair comes a little nearer, makes it safe. You stand on that old tree trunk and sit down gently now. Lean back, put the pretty things you stand on, 
Over there and lean back. That's it. I want you to do that now. Imagine a very heavy weight pressing on there, a very heavy weight. Is it true you come from Sweden? Does your mother know you're in the jungle? <laughs> <laughs> Hands by your sides. Heavy weight. You better cover these up, otherwise you'll get sunburnt. <clears throat> if you get nervous, let's pull one of these cords, the parachute will open. Are you still there? God, that's fine. Then. There we go. Press up a heavy weight. Nice and rigid. We're going to take the chair away. Trust me. Now, rest your feet on my hands, like that. When I take the board, don't go. No, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Rigid like a rock. Rigid. Take your feet off my hands. That's it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Right. Relax. You did it. That was terrific. Wonderful. Step right off. I think you deserve all the applause. There it is. By the way, if you're going back to Sweden, it's the first tree on the left. <laughs> and now, I came out here to catch gorillas. And I couldn't catch one, but we've got something we put gorillas into, and it's a straight jacket. So we couldn't find a gorilla for you, so I'm afraid they'll have to just fix me in its place. I think these two little girls from the Amazon are off to my blood. Let's see what they can do. If you really want my money, you could get it easier than that, you know. That's it. Uh -huh. They mean business. Oh, that's that. By the way, ladies, you want to watch this? This is terrific for slimming. Where did you learn to do this? That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh no, not more. Oh yeah. Don't mind. Go. I'm in the middle. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh well well. Come again sometime when we're not so busy. Well, to make it difficult, we're going to hang upside down. That's what that's for. They're going to hook me on, and away we go on the best of luck. Just uh, come up to see me sometime. <laughs> what makes me laugh is I don't have to do this. Where is it? First thing to do is to take the right
Did you like it, Leonard? Oh, fine, very fine. I think I'll find a better seat. Oh. So long. So long. You heard about the hunter that went into the jungle and laughed at the witch doctor? is the amazing transposition of a rabbit into a fur coat, the fantastic manipulation of cards and lighted cigarettes, the most dangerous trick in the world, catching a live bullet, sawing a woman in half, and the strange appearance and disappearance of a menagerie of animals is And now, Producer Showcase presents the second act of Festival of Magic. Like the show, Marvin? Yeah, not bad. And now, our third magician of the evening is June Merlin of Ireland. Yeah, he certainly knows how to whip out a very fancy introduction. <laughs> yeah, he's half William Jennings Bryant and half Calvin Coolidge. Yeah. Ladies are usually disassociated from mice. Beauty contest winners are not synonymous to magic. But June Merlin from Belfast, North Ireland, disassociates this kind of disassociation by being the five-year undefeated beauty queen of all Ireland and by being a magician who does some quite wonderful things with mice. June Merlin of Ireland.
Wasn't that wonderful? She produced that expensive velvet cloak from that cheap rabbit stole. What kind of a crack was that? Easy, Lester. Let's not lose our hair trigger temper, shall we? Oh, shut up, Frank. One of the beloved names of sleight of hand is that of the Englishman Cardini. Cardini travels lightly. He carries only 72 objects, a package of cards, and a package of cigarettes. All of us know how difficult it is to produce cards from the air. We've tried it, I'm sure. To get them from nowhere is, is an almost impossible thing, to hold them and hide them and so forth. But Cardini does this with gloves. Cardini of England.
I know that uh, you gentlemen sort of frown on my interjecting things into the show, but uh, I'd like to do an old bit of mine that... Uh, would, you, would you, sir, help me? Uh, this won't take but a moment. We'll be on time, sir. Just uh, behind here, this is uh, my guillotine bit. <laughs> now, then, we just take the... Uh, uh, we'll take this block out. This, uh, we won't need that for the moment. They take it right up there. And, uh, that seems to be all right. Now then, try it with this cabbage first. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see how she goes. <laughs> that seems to work all right. Yeah, all right. There you are. That's fine. Now let's just take the block back so we can... Head level in there. There you are. Just stuck your head there, would you, sir? <laughs> I think I remember how to do this. <laughs> All right, now. Now, let's see. Uh, first, we take out the block of wood. No, don't you move. No, don't you. Uh... And we take the old blade up. And out. Okay. Oh, you don't have to smile. It's all right. Just a... <laughs> Ready? see a man risk his life as he attempts to catch in his teeth a bullet fired at him from 23 feet away. A girl hypnotized and then sawed in half. And the variety of fish, cats, chickens, ducks, and pigeons made to appear out of nowhere on Producer Showcase. And now Producer Showcase presents the third act of Festival of Magic.
from the United States comes a man who has performed in 32 countries, Milbourne Christopher. Mr. Christopher has invented over 500 tricks. He will perform tonight what he terms the most dangerous of all tricks. Twelve of the men who tried variations of this trick died in the attempt. Tonight, Milbourne Christopher will catch in his teeth a bullet fired from a high-powered rifle. Milbourne Christopher of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I will attempt, and I say attempt, the most dangerous feat in the lexicon of magic, to catch a bullet between my teeth fired from a rifle 23 feet distance. I'd like to tell you a little about the history of the feat. The first record was 1631. Since then, 12 magicians have been killed. Here are a few of the names, Dr. Epstein, Blumenthal, Sartell. On the night of March 23rd, 1918, on the stage of London's Wood Green Empire, Chung Ling Su was shot. In New York, Harry Houdini was playing the Hippodrome. Houdini announced that he would duplicate the sensational bullet catch. Early in the program, you saw the letter that Harry Keller, Dean of the Society of American Magicians, sent to Houdini pleading that he not risk his life. Houdini took Keller's advice and did not perform it. Tonight, that is the feat I will attempt. Two bullets will be fired. The first bullet will be fired through this plastic sheet. It will then break this plate and lodge in the background. I will then stand in position in front of the plate and the second bullet would be fired. I'm about ready to make my try. I'd appreciate it if we had absolute quiet in the studio. The rifleman is Mr. Maxwell Handelsman. He's an attorney practicing in New York City and also the president of the Manhattan Rifle and Revolver Club and a champion marksman. The rifle belongs to Mr. Handelsman. The bullets, too, are his. They are 22 caliber long rifles. You will notice that the chamber is empty. Mr. Handelsman will now place a bullet in the chamber. The rifle is ready to fire. Please observe that the bullet will pass through the plastic, then shatter the plate. They are now ready for their first shot. Ready, aim, fire. You can see that it pass, pass through the thick plastic sheet. You can also see that it shattered the plate. I shall now stand in front Oh, of course, the hole is in the backboard. There are a couple spare little pieces that came out from the plate, too. I shall take position in front of the plate. You will notice that Mr. Christopher's head is exactly where the plate was hanging. The gun will now be reloaded for the second shot.
he's uh, quite good with that, that rifle bit, but uh, it's not as hard as it looks, you know. Uh, come with. I'm going to be honest with you, I've never tried this. <laughs> Let's see now. I think we've got her down. Let's look at it this way. <laughs> two out of two. <laughs> the Suez Canal was closed and it became necessary to ship Sorcar's heavy mechanisms months ahead in advance to bring it to our studios here tonight for the performance. Sorcar will saw a woman in half during his performance this evening and like the 50 odd rolling chiefs and maharajas, who have seen Sorkar do this, I know you too will experience the same frightened thrill. Sorkar from India. This is the most ancient of all illusions of my country. This is known as the Temple of Benares. It is so called because in this part of my country the highest form of occultism and magic are practiced. So ladies and gentlemen, the Temple of Benares. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just now seen the temple of Benares. Now please see again the lady of the temple. <laughs> Next, another ancient item from my country. It is the Indrajal paper frame.
now to the most noted, most mystifying illusion of the world, cutting a lady in half. The saw will cut completely through the girl's body and be stopped by the steel bar which has been placed in position. Now I'm ready, but I can't talk with you because my absolute concentration is necessary. It is a customary ritual in India for Mr. Sarkar and his company to invoke divine assistance at this point. You're all right? You're all right? You're all right? You're all right? Open your eyes! Open your eyes! Look at them! Smile! 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 I think I have the sword bit figured out. Uh.
<laughs> you all right? <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Showbiz. <laughs> I, I must confess, I feel a little awkward <laughs> about this. I, I really feel I, I should apologize. Oh, no. Not at all. Oh, that's very decent of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Awfully nice chat. <laughs> France, too, is represented tonight on the Festival of Magic and the Legend of Men of René Satan. Anyone who has ever received baby ducks for any particular holiday has always found the difficulty of knowing just exactly how to keep them or where to put them. René Satan will solve this for us tonight, and we bring you now very happily and an ace of from France.
say good night to all the beautiful ladies. Again? Say good night uh, to the gentleman. Oh, please, Mario, the gentleman. Oh, please, gentleman. So. <laughs> Awfully, awfully decent of you, sir. I didn't think for a minute that I could talk you into it. Turn to the names of tonight's cast in just a moment.